Hello, I am Wanderer001, and it's after the holiday season, so it's cold outside, which generally means it's time for me to start doing work around my house again and catching up on my honey-do list. So I was doing some maintenance with my electrical baseboard heaters, and I thought I might share you know, some of the differences with electrical baseboard heaters. If you're looking for a new place that might have electrical baseboard heaters, or you're just curious about electrical baseboard heaters, this is, you know, this would be a little bit of a informative video for you. To start, there are a few different things that you're going to notice with electrical baseboard heaters. Uh, the first is they are all line voltage, which means you're not going to plug in the electrical heater into a wall outlet and have, you know, heat. This is something that's going to be wired directly into your electrical system behind the sheetrock wall here. So if you're not comfortable with that, you probably should get an electrician. Second is the type of thermostat that you have with the electrical heater. And I apologize for the video. I'm kind of freehanding this sitting, sitting on the floor in my bathroom. So the first type of thermostat is, if we look over here, this one's a little uh, worse for wear. And why I say I'm doing maintenance on them, I'm looking at which ones need to be repaired. Uh, so if you know anything, this particular company, Federal Pacific, no longer exists. And that's partially because of some issues that they had. Now, first type thermostat is the type that is on the electrical baseboard heater itself. Uh, what this is, it's just a on off and you kind of have little positions in between that allow you to determine the type or the amount of heat that you get. You know, it is a thermostat, but it's not as it is not as good, in my opinion, as a digital thermostat or one that you have an actual temperature reading on. This particular type of baseboard heater is good for small areas that don't always need to get heated up. In this case, this is in my bathroom. I have another one in the master bathroom, as well as one in my kitchen and dining area. The way that these are situated they're not on all the time, but if the if it gets too chilly in that particular room, I can turn this on and warm that room up. And then, you know, once it gets to a particular temperature that I feel comfortable with, I either turn the thermostat off or I lower the thermostat and the electrical baseboard heater will turn itself off. Uh, so good for warming small rooms that you don't necessarily need heated all the time or just want to add a little extra heat during uh, times that you're in there. Now the next type of distinguishing factor is a thermostat that is wall mounted. Now this is one example of a wall mounted thermostat. This is actually a low voltage thermostat, which is partially why I'm doing a check on all of my electrical baseboard heaters now. Uh, last year I had issues with one of my baseboard heaters where it was dovetailed together and I'll show you that in a moment. Half of the baseboard heater wasn't working anymore. And come to find out that when my particular condo complex was built, they cheaped out and did some, some chicanery with the wiring of these things. And they had high voltage or line voltage baseboard heaters tricking through some means that they could connect it to a low voltage thermostat. Now, the difference between a low voltage and a line voltage thermostat, uh, a low voltage thermostat has only two uh, lines to it. Generally, this is gonna be what you find in baseboard gas heat or forced air homes, like those little old fashioned circular dial thermostats. Those are the types of things that use low voltage. Line voltage is more like an electrical outlet or light switch, which has four lines, you know, ground, hot, and so forth. I won't get into it totally. But this is partially why I'm doing the maintenance of my electrical baseboard heating system now after finding that particular item out last year. So this is a digital low voltage programmable thermostat, which shouldn't be here if I have line voltage, line voltage electrical baseboard heaters. So this is actually what we ended up getting. And I apologize for it being kind of dark. I can turn that on. Uh, Again, it's cold outside so and snowy, so that's why I'm inside doing stuff. But this is a line voltage thermostat by Honeywell. You can see that at one point there was, because of my lovely 
wallpaper there, uh, there was a low voltage square unit and we went to this rectangular vertical unit. Um, so this is a line voltage thermostat that we got with our new electrical baseboard heater. So again, this is just another type of thermostat that's a wall mounted thermostat, which is, I, in my opinion, better than having the thermostat on the unit itself, even if it does come with, you know, 50, 55, 60, 65, you know, markers like that. Having the thermostat be away from the unit itself means that you're going to actually get a better heat disbursement because the heat element, you know, the therm thermostat is not going to be right on the heater, meaning you'll get a better closer to this actual temperature than you would if it was right on top of the heater. The next distinguishing factor would be how the electrical baseboard heating system heats. I know that's going to sound a little weird, but uh, we're going to call this type the normal or classic type. What this is, let's see if I can get in here, give you an idea. There are fins, you know, metal fins, which an electrical current is run through. And those electric and those fins heat up and dissipate heat throughout the house. Now, the benefit of this, this type of electrical heater is the air heats up rather quickly. So you turn it on, you put your hand in front of the, uh, the elements here, and you could feel the heat coming off it right away. Now, the downfall to that is if you're running it off of a wall thermostat, it's going to have significant drops in temperature. So what it's going to do is, you, let's say you have a thermostat like I had the other one, 66. Uh, depending on the type of thermostat, this will get up to 66 and then the unit turns off. It drops below 66, meaning it goes to like six, drops to 65 and then the heater kicks on again. So you'll, you'll feel a difference in the air uh, temperature, but this will heat up quickly and it'll heat the room up quickly. The next type is hydraulic. Um, and again, this is an ideal lighting conditions, I apologize. Um, so we're gonna get in here and what you'll see is, you'll see the fins, but underneath the fins, hopefully you can make that out, there is a tube filled with a hydraulic fluid and not actual hydraulic fluid, but a fluid that conducts heat. So this particular type of electrical baseboard heater heats the tube of liquid and then that liquid then radiates heat to the fins that are right on top of it. This is more like your gas electric uh, gas baseboard heater that you would find. So the interior tube gets hot and then the fins radiate the heat. Now there again are benefits and downfalls to this particular heating system. One of the benefits is you do not notice a change in room temperature as much as you would with the classic baseboard heater. This is because even after there's no electrical current going through the tube anymore, it's still radiating heat through the fins. So you're going to get a more standard or level heat throughout your house. Uh, another benefit of this particular unit would be that the fins do not get as hot as the fins on the classic. So it's a little safer to keep around curtains or what have you. Not ideal, neither of these are ideal, but this one's a little safer. Now, as for the downfalls of the hydraulic system, it takes much longer to heat up than it does with the classic system. Before I replaced this unit, I had the classic in my living room. This is my living room and I would turn up the heat two degrees every morning when I woke up. And with the classic system, it took between five to 10 minutes. With the new hydraulic system, which you know, they said would save me money, it now takes 20 to 25 minutes to heat up those two degrees. So it's better at holding a temperature without having a high degree of change, but it takes longer for the heating element to heat up to a, a temperature. Now, again, as I mentioned, I got this one because where we got it, they said that the hydraulic would save you money. And I was really, really trying to do a, a comparison between the original baseboard heater that we had versus the hydraulic baseboard heater we now have. But we ran into a lot of issues, mainly being last year, the uh, polar vortex and the non-programmable exterior mounted thermostat 
versus the new digital programmable thermostat that we have and placed where the original thermostat was. So really I've got two months of usage where I could say the data, you know, temperature wise, thermostat wise and location wise are, are similar enough that I'm comfortable in saying the difference is almost negligible because it takes longer for this unit to heat up than it does for the other unit. Yes, it doesn't turn on as often as the old unit did, but it takes longer to get to temperature. So really, it, it's a, a factor of do you want a consistent temperature feeling versus, you know, faster heating up of the room? So that's something that you're going to have to make the call for. Um, the unit, I think, was like almost $1,000 because it spans the entire front of my room. If I got the, the classic heating version, it would have been... I don't want to say half that, but I think it was like six or seven hundred dollars. So really, it, it, it's up to you as to what you would like. Uh, again, I'm not a house home guru guy. I'm just regular Joe with, you know, minimal home skills, uh, letting you know what my opinions of the electrical baseboard heating is. You might not like electrical baseboard heating. I know I don't because my electric bills are ridiculous sometimes, especially last year with the polar vortex. But Sometimes it's what you have. So if, you know, I, I threw this together, it's cold, it's rainy, I, you know, I'm doing inventory on my house, figured I would share this information with people who may be wondering about electrical baseboard heaters. If you have questions or comments, let me know. Um, if you found this helpful, I, I hope you did. If not, sorry for wasting your time. But either way, uh, I've been Wanderer001, and thanks for watching.